Welcome everyone. I'm going to go ahead and begin in the seat that I just showed you where you can sit on the heels, a block or a bolster. If you don't want to sit this way while I'm speaking to you, then you could sit in a cross legged position and then return to this. So something that I wanted to bring up for um, today's practice, I feel weird turning sideways right now. Is the aspect of silence. You know, there's a beautiful uh, Christmas carol, you know, silent night. And what I've noticed lately is that people in my circle, and you may know people in your circle, I'm just noticing they're very uncomfortable with silence. And silence is something, if you're not comfortable with it, it can be haunting, you know, it can be daunting, it can be boredom for a teenager. <clears throat> because we're constantly trying to fill the space. I've noticed every time I go to my parents' house, whether they're in the living room or not, the TV is on and it's blaring and you hear all of that. <laughs> and so they know I'm going to react every time I show up. Like, no one's in there. Can I turn off the TV? <laughs> I want to be able to talk to you without hearing the background noise. Sometimes when you're with someone, whether it's a friend or a partner, Sometimes you can tell if they're getting uncomfortable if you're sitting in silence. Sometimes it'll be like, well, and there's this long pause because they're trying to strike a conversation, but then they don't have anything to say either. But that silence is okay. Why can't we embrace it? Why can't we accept it? So it's just something I want you to sit with today. Silence is where we can get back in touch with ourselves. Silence is where we can do some deep inner listening. Silence should be natural when you're with someone. My teachers used to say, when I was going through teacher training, when we were learning meditation, we'd have to sit for meditation an hour and a half a day. You know, it was a very spiritual approach that we did with yoga. And so, they looked at the asanas as being a physical prayer, a physical expression of prayer. The, the talking as a way to, you know, speak and to recite the prayer. But as meditation was used for just the communing, to be in the presence of, to commune with, and then to do the deep listening. So when you're in conversation with someone, one person isn't talking the whole time. One person has to stand back and listen. Then that person stops and they have to share that, share the floor with you, and then you get to speak, and then they're listening. So I want you to see how you can bring this into your spiritual practice. You know, if you do look at this as being a spiritual practice, then the meditation is a way for you to tap into your higher self and a way to do the deep inner listening and just to sit and be with God or the divine or the universe or whatever term you put with it. So we are going to be listening to music through our practice, but then at the end, we're going to come back and we're going to do a silent meditation. And the last thing that I'm going to say is I was listening to Tree Sri Ravi Shankar, which is another piece of inspiration behind this. And I posted it on my Facebook page <laughs> under Moving Yoga. And um, there was a little clip where he was talking about that song, Silent Night. And the crowd starts singing it, you know, sitting with them, they're listening to it. And his point was the little self or the egoic self feel as though you are resting in the lap of the divine, in the lap of like your mother, like how comforting that would be. And it could be the little self to the higher self, you know, if you want to look at it that way. And that whole sleep and heavenly peace, it's just that, like, you know, the baby going to sleep in your arms. You know? It was just a sweet metaphor, and I thought I would bring that up 
have today since it's close to Christmas. And uh, we'll go ahead and start. So let's start sitting, preparing, and breathing. In this position, I really like to do a mudra. And since we're all women today, bring your right hand to your lap and we'll place the left hand on top with the thumbs touching. This is the mudra for being contemplative and meditative. Then align your spine. Close your eyes. And start to create the ujjaya breath. Restricting the backside of the throat. Allowing the breath to become audible to hear. Just listening to its sound. Very similar to the sound of the heat coming on the roof. Sounding like a whisper. as though you're drinking from the breath of life. Feel as though the breath is washing over the mind and body, purifying your heart. Jai means victory, so the Ujjaya breath means victorious breath. Take three more. Now bring your hands to Anjali Muldra prayer position at your heart. On the inhale, we're going to lift up into Urdhva <coughs> Vajrasana, or you can take Diamond if that's your preference. And as you exhale, you're going to fan the arms out to bring the hands down, shifting shoulders over hands to tabletop position. On your next inhale, you're going to rock forward and you're going to lower down from a cobra onto a prone position to the brow, sliding your arms out, palms still together. Pose of prostration, a pose of deep, deep reverence. And now slide your hands under your shoulders. Inhale, push up to tabletop. And as you exhale, walk the hands out, lowering the head between the arms, creating puppy pose. Different than melting heart. Your belly's still drawing in, your rib cage is still in, and your shoulders are still on top of the back instead of melting towards the floor. On your next inhale, travel the hands back enough so that you can lift up again to Urdhva Vajrasana or Diamond. And then as you exhale, slowly sit down into Varasana. All right, we're going to do that two more times. Inhale, coming up onto the shins, your preference, and then exhale into tabletop. Inhale, rock forward and come down like a cobra, looking out the head, and eventually exhale the pose of prostration, bowing down towards the earth. This is a pose that you'll see a lot in India, not as much in the American classes. Now slide your hands up underneath your shoulders. Inhale, push up to table. Exhale, walk the hands out, returning to puppy. And puppy is a great modification for downward facing dog. Notice the angle is still the same from the wrist to the hips. 
The only difference is not using as much of the lower body. All right, inhale, you can travel the hands back long enough to lift up to Urdhva Vajrasana or nine with Yogi's choice. And then exhale, sitting back down, Varasana, the hero pose. All right, one more, but we're gonna add melting heart after puppy. Inhaling up. Exhale, hands fan out to table. Good. Inhale, roll down for a brief cobra bhujangasana. And then exhale, hands forward, roll down. Inhale, hands slide back. Push up to table. And exhale, walk it out, recreating your puppy pose. Now from puppy pose, let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, slide out through the mouth and go ahead and drip the belly, chest, and chin down, melting into the shoulder joints, looking out with the eyes. If that strains your neck, you can come back to the forehead. So we're just deepening this back in. On your next inhale, slide your hands back, come up, and we'll complete this modified sun salutation by exhale, coming down towards the heels or prop. All right, that was our warm up. Now, you can sit in that block or bolster away, lifting up again to the knees, stepping forward with the foot, and then coming up to stands. The geisha way. I think I got that from the movie or book, <laughs> but it works. All right, roll from your heels to the toes, spreading them nice and wide, and joining your hands together at your heart. Take a moment to set your personal intention for being here, maybe dedicating your practice to another. And let's begin. Inhale, bring the arms up. We're going to take a gentle back then looking up towards the ceiling. And as we exhale, sit back with your hips. Draw the thigh bones back, lean forward with your torso, taking Utkatasana chair. On your next out breath, go ahead, fold over to your Uttanasana. Now, since this is the first time we're opening back of the legs and it's super cold today, and it is early in the day, Let's just be here to warm up the back of the legs. And affirm nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. I choose to embrace sacred golden silence. Now inhale, bring your hands up the legs, lengthen out through the vertebrae. And as you exhale, drop right back in. Inhale, let's sit back to plank. And from your plank position, rock forward, lower down to your chaturanga dandas. Inhale, lift to upward facing dog. And as you exhale, roll it back to downward facing dog. Again, feel that sim uh, uh, familiar and similar angle from the rest of the hips like we did in puppy. And now applying it here. But pressing and rooting through the feet to allow the sits bones to rise to create the pedicle of the pose. On your next inhale, you're welcome to step forward with the left foot. You're also welcome to lift the left leg first. And then swing that foot through between the hands. Turn and plant your back heel firmly to the floor. Helicopter up with your right arm hanging back and your left arm shining above. Now notice your alignment here. Did you come out of the front lunge? Can you keep lunging into that left knee? Can you roll open through your left thigh? Can you breathe into the left side body and maybe accelerate the lengthening of the left arm? From here, exhale. You're going to bring the hand down to the inside of the left foot, right arm reaching towards the heavens above, or 
crossing it over the ear. Yogi's choice with the side angle you preference. All right, now we're going to flow. Inhale, keeping the lower body the same, lifting the side warrior. Exhale, coming down, side angle. Good again. Inhale, building up. Exhale, bringing it down. Be firm and grounded in the feet. One more, inhaling up. And exhaling, side angle pose. Dialing and pivoting the heart slightly more towards the ceiling. And now cast your gaze down, spin off the back heel, frame that front foot with your hands, spring back, plank. Exhale, rock forward, lower down, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, lift, up dog, and exhale, roll back to down dog. Be with your breath. Create that ujjaya pranayama so you can listen to it. Inhale, yogi's choice to just step the right foot through or to lift the leg first, bringing it through between the hands, turning and planting the back heel, helicopter up, taking side order. Checking in that you're still lunging that front knee, rolling open through the thigh, breathing into the right lung, and create a more dynamic line with that top and then exhale, bring it down to Parsva Panasana. Your expression, your way. And if you need to modify, you can always just rest the elbow on the knee. All right, now let's flow. Inhale, draw it up. Lower body stays stable. Exhaling, bring the mobility in through the upper body. Continue. Flowing with breath. Pausing here, side angle. Maybe dialing the heart a little bit more sky. And then exhale, look down, spin off the back heel, plant the palms, right foot plank. And then take that next vinyasa, building upper body strength on your way down, building flexibility in the back bend, and drawing in from the navel to roll back over the feet. It's your breath, the song of your soul. Yogi's choice, when you inhale, to walk forward, lunge forward, or float. Make halfway up when you do. And then exhale, bow out. Inhale to the top. Line it up, arch it back. Exhale, sit back. Utkatasana, belly firm. Accentuate the traps. Exhale, fold over straight legs. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, let go. Inhale to plank. Exhale, lower down and hover if possible. Inhale, open your heart and throat. Exhaling, rock and roll back. Be here with your breath. All right, inhale. We're gonna set the left foot through or you can lift it up first and then plant it at the top. Roll down to your back heel. This time, Virabhadrasana two. So look at making sure your feet are aligned. 
your legs feel strong. <clears throat> You're activating your bandhas, especially the one at the navel. Radiate out through the hands. And we're going to be spinning off the back heel, but we're going to lift the right arm as we elevate the back heel, hands together, and then we're going to twist and wind to the left. Trying to lift the navel over the thigh so the thumbs can come more to the heart. And then turn and plant your right foot, lift the right arm, bring it back up, Viravadrasana two. Cautious execution. Inhale, right arm up, lift the right heel. Go ahead and continue to wind yourself around, revolving side angle. Now, if that was a difficult maneuver, what you can do is come out of the twist and hover, plant the back foot, and then lift the right arm. That might be helpful. Right arm comes up, hands together. Third round, power of three. If it was better to hover, unwind first, plant the foot, right arm lifts up. My legs are bothered. <laughs> Exhale, helicopter down. Left foot back, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Feels good to warm up though, doesn't it? After coming in from the cold. Exhale, down dog. Now, anytime we're in a down dog, especially if you're going to be lifting one foot up in the air, you need to make sure that the feet aren't excessively wide. Just a few inches in between. All right, right side next. When you're ready, step it through. Roll the left heel to the floor. That's when it's safe to come up to warrior two. Both hips opening, spreading, heart lifting, navel lifting, and setting that drishti. Left arm lifts as the back heel lifts. And then twist, twist, wind, wind around to the right. Good, when you're ready, unwind, plant the back foot. Left arm comes overhead, returning to warrior two. Left arm lifts. Take your time, a little treat. Good, coming out, lowering the back foot, left arm up. One more. Squeeze that right hip in when you take that twist. Warm that relationship with breath. Good, now bring it back up for your two. Hands down, step it back, drop it low, open the heart, and roll back. And breathe, most important. You're ready. Look forward. Launching through if you want to float or walk or hunch. Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, bow out. Inhale, root to come up. Arms overhead. Arch back. Exhale, knees bend. Bukatasana. Fire up your core. Fire up your feet. Exhale, release. In and halfway up. Out, lower back in. Inhale, plank. Exhaling, arms clip into the side body as you drop. Inhale, arms straighten as you lift. And exhale, downward facing dog. Good. 
Inhale, let leg can lift if that's your preference. Step it through, plant your back foot. This time float the arms up, straighten the front leg, straight, straight, straight the front leg. Right arm hangs back, similar to side warrior, but now it's old school triangle. Exhale to modern triangle. And from modern triangle, Feel that stretch through the inner left thigh. Start to turn your gaze down towards your left foot. I think you guys are going to be okay with this in blissful. Lunge the front knee. Bring the hands in front of the left foot. Roll your right hip down. This is not standing split. We're just creating more of an L shape with the legs. The right foot is firing back towards the wall behind you. Toes turn down. So you should be able to feel the hamstrings, the IT band, the quads, as well as the inner thigh. Not as much as the modern triangle, but it should be there. All right, now softly bend the left knee. Tiptoe the right foot down behind you. Bring the arms up. We're doing sequences today. Right arm back, left arm skyward. Good, exhale, modern triangle. Stacking the shoulders, energizing the top hand, gazing down and transferring fingertips to the floor, right leg lifts. Your head is out, but you're looking down towards the ground and breathe. All right, one more. Softly bend the left knee, tiptoe the right foot down, close the hands up, straighten the front leg. Old school triangle to modern triangle. Being here, an extra breath. And looking down, stacking onto the hands, lifting the right leg, squaring the hips and breathe. Now we're gonna come back up. So bend the left knee, tiptoe the right foot down. Bring the arms up like you did in that first pose, but we're not gonna do the whole sequence again. We're actually gonna bend the knee, bring the hands down and step back plank. And then take the vinyasa if you so choose. That will help to keep that inner heat going in your body. You can stoke the fire here. Inhale, right leg. Exhale, swing it through. Plant your back foot, float your hands up. Right arm close to the ear, straighten the right leg. Exhale, modern triangle. Long linear lines and open up space for the diaphragm between the navel and the top of the sternum. Look down. Lunge the right knee, stack onto the hands, pick up the back foot, roll the left hip slightly downward, push out through the heel, spread open through the toes. Then the right knee, tiptoe the left foot down, flip the hands up, right arm alongside the ear. Exhale. Triangle. Exhale, look down, stack onto the hands, pick up the back foot and reach through the left leg. Was this two or three? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Tiptoe back down. We'll do one more flow. I'm trying to do three of these. Exhale, triangle. Lunge the knee, hands down, back foot lifts, flex that foot, fixate your gaze. 
Good. Now this time when we come up, right arm overhead, and then we'll transfer down for the vinyasa. Hands plant to frame the front foot, stepping back, lowering down, building up, and rolling back. Hold and breathe. You'll be happy to know we just got one more time now after this. And then we'll switch our focus. Now this can be a cooling position. More than anything, to bring the energy towards the third eye. Inhale, planting the feet at the top of the mat, however you want to arrive is fine. Exhale, spill down with your head and heart. All right, we got one more. Inhale up, arch it back. Exhale, Utkatasana. Try to leave out any extra sway back. And then coming down. Uttanasana. In and halfway up. Out and lower back in. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale to downward facing. Use the pause. Breathe left. Have your knee pieces back to yourself. Inhale, left leg on the right. Exhale, step it through. Offset your right foot or hop it forward and bring the arms up to Varabhadrasana 1. So from Varabhadrasana 1, we're going to circle the hands behind the back. Now, if it's too much to place the hands, you can always cross the arms. Exhale, humble warrior. Inhale, root your left foot. Lift the heart up, bow the head back. Exhale, humble the warrior and let the neck go. Inhale, coming up, opening up. And exhale, hinge, fold. Inhale, just halfway up. Release your hand, step it back. Continue the vinyasa. You can always go to down dog or child's pose if you lost some energy. One more side, guys. Lift the right leg. Step it through. Back foot down. Arms reach out. And bring it on. Warrior one. Hands tie behind the back. Open up. Exhale, fold it down. Inhaling up. Exhale, humble the warrior. One more. Inhale. And exhale. And halfway up. Out, release your hands. Last vinyasa. That may be music to your ears, which is why I'm saying it. <laughs> Listen to your breath. Let's close it out. Inhale. Coming through. Ardha Uttanasana at the top of the mat. Exhale, drop down. Inhale, building up without the back bend. 
Third Vahasasana. Exhale, hands to your heart. We're balancing, bend the knees, cross your right leg over your left. Now you can rest on the wall of the foot. You can rest on the big toe. You can rest on a block. You can hook it around your calf. It's all good. Bring your hands to prayer position first. Get really steady on the foot that's solid to the floor. And now hook right arm under left for the full Gauradas. Squeeze your arms together, squeeze your legs together. And now fold. Bringing the elbows towards the knees, they don't have to touch, you're looking down. Inhale back up. Exhale, release, and then wind. Okay. Bend the knee, sit back. Left leg over the right. Do you need a perch of a block? Do you want to rest on the foot or wrap it? And the heart. Find your gaze point. And left arm under the right. Squeeze the arm, squeeze the legs. Exhale, bow forward. Keep that point of concentration. And inhale, lift. Unwrap the arms and legs. Walk it out. We're going in again. <laughs> All right, sit back. <clears throat> right leg over the left. How was your weekend, by the way? Is it good? Did anybody else have an emotionally crazy weekend? Just kidding. Oh, they're washing our windows. Nice. <laughs> okay, right arm under the left. So if you did have an emotional weekend, consider this affirmation. At the center of life's storms, I can choose to be certain. All right, now we're gonna fly. So we're gonna unwrap the legs, straighten the standing leg, unwrap the arms, create your wings. Push the right foot back like we did earlier, except now you can't depend on your hands. Breathe. Vikasana. Slowly bring the foot down. Now it's the heart. Wow. Staying on the plant and so water. <laughs> Trusting soul. <laughs> Sit back. Left leg over the right. Left arm under. The center of life storms, I can choose to be serene. Usually that requires honing in on the breath. Unwrap the arms and left, straighten your right leg, push back through the left foot and take flight. Lower the left foot and relax your arms. I'm tired now. <laughs> and start. We're going to flow back to the floor. Okay. Inhale, arms reach. 
Exhale, fold. In and halfway up. Now, if you want the vinyasa, take it. If not, you can step back, downward facing dog. No these choice there. If you want that vinyasa, I'll wait. Now, if it's in your practice to jump through with straight legs to Dandasana, you're welcome to do that because that's where we're going. If you feel more confident crossing the ankles, hopping through to sit, do that. And if you don't like jumping at all, come down to your knees and then bring the legs out in front. All right, but we're gonna walk it forward. Have fun. <laughs> your heels are right at the top edge of your mat. And then bring that dorsiflexion into the ankles. Push down through the thigh bones. Go ahead and sail the arms overhead. An active dandasana. Staff pose. Exhale, we're going to fold into Hashimotanasana. Find your edge. Inhale, palms are open as you come back to Dandasana, different formula. Belly is gonna scoop in, we're gonna puff into the kidneys, and as we roll back, go at least halfway down, but then turn your palms down, circle the legs over your face, keep your head stable. <coughs> Some people keep their hands to the mat. Other people like to support the back. I like to support. Kalasana, Palau. Don't worry if the feet touch or not. All right, now bring the hands to the floor. Squeeze that navel back towards the spine. Roll it down again about halfway with control. And then pick up your hands, lower the feet and lift. Right back where we started. Active dumbass. Palms face each other. Exhale, forward fold, Pashimo Tanasana. Firming. Here is you holding I'm safe. I'm sound. Good things come to me. Inhale, draw the trunk back, arms out, palms open. Scoop the belly in, control at least halfway back, and then sink your hands, lower your head, circle the legs over the face. Halasana flower. I haven't been able to do this pose in a while. I started getting this weird abdominal pain out of nowhere. And all of a sudden this week I can do it again. The body can be mysterious. So if you ever feel any pain, it's not worth it, right? Just come out of the pose. You may be able to do it in a couple of weeks again. Bring the hands down, sweep the belly in. Roll it down about halfway and then lower the legs, lift the trunk. Active Dabhasana. Power of three, exhale, fold. Inhale back up, arms open. Spine erect. Exhale, squeeze the navel. Roll it back. Last clap. And again, you may want support, you may not. 
I love that you guys are modifying. If you need to modify, it's always good just to be flat on your back and keep the legs like Affirming here, you piece in consciousness that's flooding down and through my being. All right, so when we roll down this time, we're not coming up. So you're rolling, 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 down to the sacrum. And then once you're at the sacrum and the low back flat, bend the knees, keep the head on the floor and hug them in. Apanasana. When release. <coughs> Remember, a little is enough. You don't have to overly squeeze here. Fan your arms out and let your knees roll left. Some people prefer crossing the leg for this twist. If you want that <coughs> expression, you can add it in. And add your belly balloon out as you inhale. Deflate or draw in as you exhale. Inhale, contract the core to bring the knees through center. Exhale, let them roll off to the right. Slowly and deep. Now, before we come out of this pose, I just want you to consider maybe what you would prefer for Shavasana. Maybe you just want a simple corpse pose. If that's the case, just roll the center, slide your legs out, fan the feet apart, and bring the arms down a bit. If you prefer to create a restorative position, roll completely to your right. That way you can gather whatever props you need and you can set up. And join the others. So we're going to do a fairly quick shavasana today so that we can sit to meditate. We're going to go ahead and start. Shavasana by turning down the music. Allowing there to be a little bit more silence and room. Send your attention down into your feet. Relax on the toes, arches, and ankles. And bring that awareness from your feet up through your legs. Softening your calf. Your knees, both thighs. Go ahead, relax the hips, buttocks, and pelvic floor. Let your whole lower body let go.
and soften your abdomen. Notice how it naturally rises on the inhale, drops on the exhale. See if you can find that similar experience in your chest. So your back through the support the knee. You're doing the same, your shoulders, arms, and hands. Relax your neck, your throat. Facial muscles, even the sensory organs. Times words are very unnecessary. The way you need to offer joy and silence. Mindfulness bell ring. Take that as your cue. Come back to the breath. Smoothen it up. And as you align your breath, you're going to then play from out this position. Maybe hugging the knees in first. Rolling off and away to one side. We're going to come up to create a formal seat. I'm going to go back to what we started with, <coughs> but you can form another. Now I'm going to go back to the same mudra that you can do another. I would suggest turning your gaze in and up towards the mind's eye. It's 
since we're sitting inside. You would simply bear witness to the ebb and the flow of your breath. But at the same time, deeply listen. Not to noises from the outside. Your soft whispers or prompting on the inside. Chant on the out breath. So let's take a deep breath in. Oh. Way 
and shove me, shove me, shove me. And we all walk away feeling more at peace. Our minds, bodies, and bodies. Thank you.